All right, with that as the backdrop, joining me right now is South Carolina attorney Tyler Bailey. Thank you so much for joining me, Tyler. Tyler, what was your immediate reaction to today's closing arguments? Well, first, I'd like to say I think the defense and the prosecution did a great job during their closing arguments, and they really are painting two different pictures. They both have admitted that Alec, of course, loved uh, Paul and he loved his wife, Maggie. The state saying that he loved them, but he loved himself more. That's why he killed his wife and his son when the world around him was crashing. I think John Meadows during his closing really tried to just go to common sense, try to remind jurors, don't get lost in all the reasonable doubt or issues regarding two guns and, and uh, a shirt or tarp and things of that nature. Don't get lost in that. Remember your common sense. So the jury has a lot to think about. I think both sides did an excellent job. Uh, the judge, Judge Newman, will instruct them on their jury charges and they'll have to consider what version of the case do they want to believe? Do they want to believe that there's so much doubt here that they are obligated to either acquit um, Alec or if they can't reach a verdict, then there's a hung jury, or if they believe that common sense is telling them that there is no reasonable doubt that will allow Alec to walk away from this and find him guilty. Tyler, do you think that anything that the jury heard today moved the needle for them? In, 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 in you know, for example, do you think they've already made up their minds? Well, I think the biggest thing that jurors bring into the deliberation rooms is their life experience. So I think during this entire case, there's been a lot of expert testimony from countless witnesses. There's been a lot of uh, attacking of law enforcement, how they investigated the crime scene, and their lack of a proper or a negligent investigation, as the defense tells it. And I think that the closing here is tying it all back in to regular experience as a regular person you know what do you think about how do you know husband and, and, and wife relationships and uh, father and son relationship versus uh, Blanca and Shelly's testimony how they hey, just regular people and here's some things that the state is saying is a red flag so I think closing is bring it back to the heart of the, the case and what they know best which is their common life experience how long do you think the jury will deliberate now uh, there's no telling. If it's a quick deliberation, I think that's bad for the defense. If it's a long deliberation, I think they're they're meddling over which way to go here. So uh, the defense is likely hoping for a, a longer de deliberation, meaning that the jur jury's having a hard time coming to a decision. If they come to a quick decision, as a defense lawyer, uh, I would be kind of worried that they just obviously, they heard enough, they, they've made their opinion, they've made their verdict, and they're ready to go ahead and get this case over with. Now, the jury has had a lot to think about in the past six weeks. They were also very busy yesterday. They went on a trip to the Moselle property. Do you think that that trip made a difference at all in their mind? Certainly. I think that going to Moselle, being able to get a real-life feel for the kennels, the feed room, the distance between the kennel and the house, it's, different. it's a difference uh, when you hear about something and you see a picture versus actually walking on the ground, getting a feel of the property. He, seeing where the dog would have been barking at versus where Alex said he was when he went to the kennel and drove the golf cart back to the property. So I think going to Moselle, hearing closing arguments is really tying everything home for uh, the jury. So it's definitely probably helpful for them in making their decision. And I, I think the defense was right in trying to, uh, well, making sure that the jury had an opportunity to walk the property before del deliberating. Tyler, what, what do you make of the juror issue that happened this morning where a juror was removed because of improper conduct? Uh, she was apparently having a condo with uh, other people about the case, and then there was this whole uh, weird, strange eggs incident where she uh, took some eggs and removed the, them from the courtroom. What do you make of all of that? Is that going to be a distraction at all? I don't think it'll be a distraction. I think these jurors, the jurors have been here for six weeks now, really locked in and focused on this case. I do think that having a juror excluded this late in the trial um, is, is definitely a, a blow that both sides likely uh, would have hoped to, to be able to avoid. The defense seemed pretty adamant that they wanted this juror uh, to remain on the jury. Unfortunately, she was talking about the case, which was a direct contradiction to the instructions that Judge Newman gave. And so by law, I believe he made the right call and uh, excluding her from the jury. But I, I do think, I mean, a, a new decision maker is in. We don't know how this decision maker would have uh, 
deliberated. Now there's another person who's stepping in her shoes. So we'll see what happens. What happens now if, if there is a hung jury? Do you think uh, the judge will make the jury go back to make a decision? I think the judge will try to get to get the jury to make a decision. Now, if it's a hung jury, I believe uh, as a as there's a constitutional right here that need be we need to have unanimous ver verdict uh, of the jury. So uh, I, I don't believe Judge Newman will push him too hard to make a decision if they come out and say they can't make a decision. Now, if it's early on and they they they're hung, there's a I think a great chance that Judge Newman would say deliberate further. But if they come out after a significant period of time of deliberating and they can't make a decision, I think that the right call is to you know, declare the mistrial as a hung jury and the state will have to make a decision whether they want to try this case again. What do you make of Judge Newman's ruling throughout the trial? It was a real game changer, wasn't it, to allow the financial crimes in? Yeah, I think the financial crimes coming in was a game changer in this case because without that, there would never have been the load of witnesses to talk about uh, Alex lies. I think he may have uh, had a chance or probably would not have elected to take the stand if all that evidence didn't come in. I also believe it gives the defense an issue to raise on appeal if Alex is convicted by this jury. It was a tough call. Um, I think the defense did a good job handling all of the uh, overwhelming evidence of financial crimes that came in, and Alex tried to get ahead of it by admitting, taking the stand and saying that he lied, admitting essentially to his financial crimes, but saying he did not kill his wife and son. Um, it's a tough call. The, the, this trial would have been completely different if this evidence was not allowed in. Uh, the state loaded uh, their, their witnesses of financial crimes, and it may turn out to distract the jury, too. We'll, we'll see.